Sorry, I just want to watch uh, a movie. <laughs> <laughs> or the, actually, I'm watching the Discovery series on uh, uh, Paramount Plus. Uh, been enjoying that, uh, but uh, sometimes I get, I do that deep dive down into the news, and, uh, and and yeah, I could sit there and take notes and do everything. I'm just one dude, you know. I'm just trying to to give you the facts as I see them, and you know, you get a lot of conflicting information. Uh, you watch Russian television, you watch the uh, Canadian prepper, you watch the Duran. Uh, uh, you flip around um, and, uh, and then you try to just disseminate it all into what you think may be happening. And, uh, and of course, you've got, uh, you've got the uh, government propaganda, the British propaganda, the BBC lying to you. You know, you've got uh, MSDNC, ABC, CBS, uh, you know, they're, and they're all lying. You know, everybody's lying about everything. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to put it all together. But I'm going to just kind of break down what... I think is going on. The first uh, fact I want you to understand, and this is uh, this is Canadian prepper. Uh, uh, you can watch him on YouTube. I always try to give uh, accolades, uh, and and he gave a real good breakdown on the, on the war uh, today. Um, but uh, he says that uh, 30 percent, 30 percent of the uh, Russian budget right now is going to the war effort. That's huge. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, if you recall back in uh, World War II, because I'm going to try to put this in a historical context on a lot of these things. If you go back to World War II, uh, I, I don't know how much of a percentage of our GDP was devoted to the war. I do know that a lot of our industry was converted into manufacturing weapons. Now, when you look at it in today's world, um, are we... Have we converted any of our industries into a war effort? I mean, are we going to total war like Russia is? Because it sounds like when you when you've got thirty percent of your GDP, that means that they've they've converted industries. They, they're ready. They're loading for bear. They're they're expecting this to escalate into a full fledged war with NATO. And in fact, they stated such today that they are at war with NATO. So um, so Russia has made that commitment. Uh, but I don't see the Western powers making that commitment. So, uh, you know, we're just basically pulling. Uh, you got to remember, we have uh, what uh, last count. I, I remember is uh, one of the magazines that I read. It might have been American Legion magazine back when I was a member. Uh, I think we had 144. We got troops in 144 countries around the world. And from what I understand, we're just taking a lot of those weapon systems out of those because uh, the U.S. empire. Right, the U.S. empire around the world. We're just taking a lot of those weapons, and we're just uh, uh, sending them to Ukraine, uh, who is expending them in huge numbers, uh, and and they're being depleted. And we can't, from what I'm seeing, our manufacturing processes aren't even coming close to keeping up with how fast uh, Ukraine is going through the weapons. And so uh, that uh, that ought to tell you. So Russia, and that's why Russia keeps hitting Ukraine with missiles. And and I did discover okay I, I said this in the, my previous video that there was a huge bombardment today they they hit the uh, electrical infrastructure hard um we're gonna see a mass migration uh, there's going to be a lot of refugees coming out of ukraine into uh, europe um we'll see what happens there i mean it's, it's going to get crazy over there uh, another european war and now uh uh, Ukraine, uh, the general, not Zelensky, but his general, and I can't remember the guy's name, uh, I think it starts with a D or something. I, you know, Like I said, I could sit here and take notes, and, and then I'd never get to make a video if I just didn't just kind of watch everything and just try to, to disseminate it all to you. But he basically at, told NATO that, uh, well, in, in my interpretation, okay, uh, that the, Ukraine's losing the war. And he said, it, you know, unless... NATO wants to go all in, and they he he was requesting like a hundred tanks and five hundred artillery pieces and you know a, a million shells and you know additional troops from NATO. Uh, otherwise, uh, he couldn't see how uh, Ukraine would be ever able to mount another offensive again against the Russians to turn the war around. Blah blah blah, and uh, and and basically, you know, I think that. Ukraine is coming to the point where Finland was in 1940. Okay, uh, the, basically in, in 1940, the Western powers had uh, promised Finland that they were going to come to their aid, and, uh, and they didn't. And Finland finally reached the point where they just said, uh, they just surrendered, basically, to the Soviet Union. And because, um, you know, they, they said without further aid from the West that 
there was no point to continue in the war. And I think the Ukraine uh, generals are starting to see that too. And in fact, I mean, if I were them right now, I'd be negotiating with Russia a peace settlement um, rather than just continue to uh, lose troops uh, in the thousands. I, I mean, from what I understand, it's at least hundreds every day, if, if not in the thousands. Uh, well, I say thousands. I know it's at least in the hundreds every day, 100 to 500 troops. Can you imagine that that type of attrition rate uh, in, in that war? It's unsustainable. And uh, so, uh, by the way, Bakrut, uh, from what I understand, 80% <clears throat> of that city is lost. Uh, now, your Western media is going to pretend that that's not a strategic spot in Ukraine. They, they, they want the world just to go on its merry way and not think uh, that's a major loss to Ukraine. That will be a ma major loss. Uh, so that that's pretty much done. Uh, I wondered, and today I kind of found out, I, you know, like I told you, 30% of the Russian budget, but I, I didn't understand where all these munitions were coming from in Russia. And so you've got to go back in history. And, and, and I understood this at the time. Everybody thinks that the Soviet Union uh, basically just dissolved and surrendered to the West. That wasn't the case. That was an internal uh, decision. Uh, Gorbachev was trying to kind of democratize. Uh, now, he had faced a lot of uh, internal opposition from the communists uh, in his country. Uh, it was more or less a, a, a whole internal thing, and that's kind of why the Soviet Union broke up, but it never, ever uh, dissolved. It never, like, ceased to exist or anything. No, they continued to manufacture weapons. They were still a very, very powerful country. And, uh, and at that time, now you got to look back in history, and this is how things had developed to what has happening today, okay, was uh, the, basically uh, Reagan uh, and then even uh, um, uh, George W. Uh, well, not George, uh, what, what was George's father's name? Well, George Bush, let's just say George Bush, uh, first for the first Bush, okay. He basically told Russia, you know, we're going to leave you alone. You know, we're not, NATO was never meant to expand okay uh, because that would threaten the alliance that we had at that time or the agreements that we had with Russia and there was a lot of great progress I mean we had the START treaty and so we agreed to to monitor each other's nuclear uh, uh, systems and uh, there was a it was a huge period of peace of course then there was the integration of East Germany with West Germany that took place uh, that all of the Eastern Bloc countries uh, they, you know, basically, you know, think about it. Their whole uh, system had to become into a free market system. That was a major adjustment for, for the people of those nations. And so that all happened peacefully, which is incredible. It was an incredible time in the world. It was a bright spot in human history. Well, then what happened? The neocons, the, the, the political idiots, the, the, the people that got in charge, uh, they decided, no, no, we're going to expand NATO. For what? Russia hasn't threatened anybody, so they wanted to expand NATO. And so first you, you had the, uh, the Eastern Bloc countries got annexed into NATO. Then you had uh, the, the Balkan nations, the three. And, and so Russia, they sat back and they said, well, you know, okay, all right. I, you know, we don't like this. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, if uh, Warsaw Pact had annexed Mexico or Cuba or even some of the nations around here, we feel very threatened here in the United States. And so, you know, the, so NATO just kept expanding, kept pushing it. And so what I'm just giving you back to how this war took place. So then NATO decided... Well, in, in 19, uh, 2014, okay, the, uh, there was a coup in, in Ukraine, and so a, a government that was favorable to Russia uh, was replaced with, you know, Zelensky. I don't know if that was Zelensky at that time. It might have been a different guy. But anyway, it was a, a, a government that was favorable to NATO, and a lot of people feel that the CIA was involved heavily in that, or that at least NATO was. And so they basically were trying to turn Ukraine into a NATO country. And so Russia still didn't attack. But at that time, it was a huge wake-up call. Now, they, Russia was already getting ready for a major uh, uh, theater. They were getting ready for a major war. Uh, but they saw the writing on the wall. And then NATO started pouring all these munitions into Ukraine, arming the, uh, the western part of Ukraine against the eastern part of Ukraine. Well, the eastern part of Ukraine, they still speak Russian. Okay, so Russia was looking at this as like, okay, uh, so there was this kind of civil war that's been taking place in Ukraine for quite some time, uh, and it was an impressive uh, environment for a lot of the Russian uh, uh, speakers in Ukraine. It was kind of like, you know, when we 
uh, you know, uh, divided this nation according to your race, okay? So they were dividing according to your language. Uh, it, it was a toxic situation. Um, so that, that's it. So bring it all the way up to uh, uh, 2020, okay? So, so you had an extremely strong commander in the, in the form of Donald Trump. Ooh, imagine that. And I, I don't think Putin uh, would have invaded uh, Ukraine under uh, Trump administration. Uh, there were too many intelligent people that existed in that administration. And plus, uh, you know, uh, Trump, Trump would have gone in uh, uh, hard. And plus, Afghanistan would have never taken place at that time. It never would have happened under a Trump administration. So, so then you had all of these events under this weak uh, bumbling fool of, of called the Biden administration, uh, and of course his, his cronies, uh, the, these people that are completely incompetent in their jobs. And so Russia, they said, okay, you know, we're not going to allow this encroachment on our on our shores any longer. Plus, they have also entered into agreements on a, a bilateral basis with uh, China. China's more or less in a, they, there's almost an alliance, although that hasn't been formally announced between China and Russia. So Russia knows they, they have no threat coming from the, the south, uh, from China. Their only threat now is from NATO. Now, think about China. China's benefiting from uh, getting all of the, now, especially now that they're opening up, they're getting all of the Russian uh, commodities. They're getting all of that for dirt cheap, uh, and, and, and they're buying them. And you, do you think the West is going to be able to stop that? No. The West is going to be stupid, and they're going to continue the war uh, in Ukraine, which is it's a feudal war. Russia has, and that's what I was telling you, go back to where I was talking about. They've been preparing for a large-scale war. Now, think about how NATO has been fighting wars for the last, I don't know, let's say 20 years, okay? Basically, it's just little conflicts. We, we invaded Grenada, for example. We, we went into Iraq, uh, you know, uh, think of where we lost. Uh, we lost in Afghanistan. We lost in Vietnam. Uh, you know, so, so basically uh, our track record's not good, and we certainly haven't geared up for a large-scale war just like World War II. I mean, that's a, this is a whole different conflict than what NATO is, is engineered for. We're just engineered for small-scale little wars. You know, we can invade Haiti, for example, or, or go in. But, but to fight on a, a massive scale with conventional weapons like, like, like what has taken place in Ukraine... That's, I mean, even if we sent troops in tomorrow with everything we got to Ukraine, I, I dare say I, I think we would lose. I really do. I mean, but I could be wrong. Maybe NATO could defeat Russia. But then what would happen? Think of how weakened NATO would be. I mean, we're running out of NATO weapons as it is. If you go in on that scale, and right now Russia's got, a, what, a million men under mobilization or something, uh, or they can call up a million. I think there's only like 500,000 uh, that have been called up so far. That's a massive, massive uh, number, and, and, and the, the supplies, I mean, well, you think about it. So, so a lot of people are questioning, well, where are all these supplies coming from? They've been preparing for this for the last 10 years. They knew this was going to happen. You know, they were waiting for Biden to get elected president. They wanted a weak uh, administration so that they could pull the trigger. And, of course, they had to have uh, China's agreement on all of this. And, of course, we got India involved, too. India is also buying Russian oil. So India is uh, so basically you got about almost 80 percent of the world. that's it's I wouldn't, wouldn't say allied, but just staying out of it. OK, and then you got the Western nations, which is NATO against Russia. So what's going to happen? I mean. Well, China, China's the next uh, shoe to fall. China's loving every second of this conflict because as NATO depletes itself and bankrupts its countries and starves its people and taxes them to death, China's just sitting over here watching the whole thing. And of course, Russia's suffering too, okay? So who's the big winner in all of this? It's China. So why do you think Japan now is, is steeping up their weapons production? Because they realize that they're not going to get any much help from the uh, Western powers. So now they're gearing up for, for war. So anyway, I, that's why I call these videos watching the world burn. I mean, do you understand where this whole geopolitical uh, conflict is going and you got it and that's that's the problem is i don't believe our leaders know a damn thing about history uh you know history repeats itself uh, what's it saying i don't know everybody wants to say it you know history rings but it chimes or something like that 
uh, all you got to do is look back in history and understand the context of, of how all this came about, how it, history was repeating itself, and so why we're literally in World War III. And if you talk to somebody on the street, go, go talk to a neighbor and say, hey, what do you think's going on in Ukraine? They say, well, the Ukraine's winning the war. <laughs> they're, they're wiping out Russia. They just had two offenses. And that's, oh, that's another, uh, let's talk another historical context just real quick before I finish off this video. So Ukraine did have two uh, offensives where they actually took back some territory, okay? Uh, to me, I think that was the Battle of the Bulge for the Ukrainians. I, I, from what I, everything I'm seeing, uh, that was their last ditch effort to, to try to show that they were powerful. And, and, but the thing was, after they'd made those offenses, what, you, what they should have done was negotiated and said, okay, look, Russia, we, we just punched you in the nose. Let's negotiate. And, and no, they said, no, we're going all the way to Crimea. <laughs> no way in hell they're going to Crimea. So anyway, I, and so that was, uh, so it was just like with the Germany during World War II, they made that, that big, there was that f big final push and then everything collapsed. And I think that's where we're at in the war. I would say, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, there's no time frame on any, that depends on how far NATO wants to go. If we send in massive amounts of American troops, and uh, of course Britain's all in. I mean, they, they, the British people don't even know the, how much money they're spending on the war. They're, they're going to freeze to death this winter while their government, just the neocons in their government, are just going to send everything they can into the even more so than the United States. Oh my God. That, wait, no, no, all the way. Uh, by the way, I, I mean, this is just what I'm seeing. Now, I do know the history that I'm telling you is correct. I can't tell you about what's taking place in Ukraine other than what I'm seeing because it's awful hard to get any information because your media is lying to you about everything. They've, they've lied to you about the jab. They've lied to you about the virus. They, there's lies, lies, and lies on top of lies. I mean, the Soviet Union, uh, Pravda, was it Pravda? Was that their media organization? They would be proud of the Western media and, and how... Uh, they suppress everything from the people. But I mean, the, the, the truth is getting out there and I'm trying to do the best I can. And uh, the 13 people that watch these videos, I hope you get some education. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida. And that's all that I can tell you about the war today.